Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at yet another unofficial Windows XP version and this one as you can probably tell from the title is called Windows XP Performance Edition. Now this is actually going to be another one of those minimalized versions. We've taken a look at actually a couple of those on this channel. We, we uh, took a look at Micro XP a while back, uh, a couple of years ago. And more recently, we took a, a look at Windows XP Netbook Edition. And this one right here is called Performance Edition, and it's kind of the same concept as both of those. It's basically trying to get rid of a lot of the unnecessary extra visual and um, kind of bells and whistles to the OS that aren't really necessary to uh, use the OS, but are extra things that make it kind of nice on you know better hardware. So things like themes, screensavers, extra desktop backgrounds, things like that. This OS has a uh, focus of kind of getting rid of a lot of that additional stuff that you don't necessarily need to use your computer productively. Um, so we're here at the install process right now. You can see it looks very, very basic. It's uh, calling itself Windows XP Professional Edition right there up at the top. So we're just done with this first portion here. We're going to go ahead and restart and boot up into the rest of the setup. Now the rest of the setup is very, very uh, minimalized and you'll, you're will you gonna see that when we actually boot into it. They've gotten rid of a lot. Uh, they have gotten rid of the background, they've gotten rid of the out-of-box experience, a lot of the, again, visual things that are nice to have but aren't necessary to have to actually use the OS. So you can see right here, this is a first sign. Normally, you don't get this if you're installing Windows XP on a standard computer. So you can see right here where it just comes up with this setup wizard saying, welcome to the Windows XP setup wizard. This right here is kind of a, a huge sign because this normally is not how the XP installer looks. This just looks like a standard application installer. It doesn't look like anything special at all. Now for reference, this right here is how the setup normally looks. You have this nice background, you've got some animations going on, you have some text telling you about some of the features of the OS. Um, you don't actually ever see this screen. You just have uh, pop-ups that will come up occasionally asking you for things like your name and what you want your computer name to be, what you want your work group name to be. So we're just going to go ahead and press next and go through it right here. This honestly looks very, very uh, similar to how the Windows 2000 setup looks. And here we go. So this looks a little bit more like the Windows XP setup. This is like a box that would come up to let you choose your region and your uh, language settings and your keyboard layout, all that stuff here. This is actually, I believe, the first um, prompt that you get where it asks you for user input. So we're going to just use the default settings that it has English, US, United States, and the US keyboard layout. We're going to go ahead and put in our name here. I'm just going to actually call this uh, XPVM. And you can see for the organization right here, they've actually uh, already put in Performance Edition July 2009. So kind of like a author's signature, if you will, although it's not the actual name of the author, but it's kind of just a uh, time and date stamp as well. This was made in July of 2009, uh, which was actually around the time that Windows 7 was released. So that's actually very, very interesting. This is a very late um, unofficial Windows XP modification. So we're going to just go ahead and press next to continue. We're going to call the computer name. Let's go ahead and just leave it like that and we won't put in an administrator password. We're going to use the default time and date settings that it has in here for us. We're going to press next. And now it's going to install the networking components. Now again, normally after you press next on that last screen, the uh, installer box here would normally go away and it would go back to that just animation and the uh, text telling you about what features were in Windows XP. So again, that's another major difference as well. So here it's going to ask you for your network configuration. We're just going to go with the typical settings. We're going to leave it a part of the work group, work group like we always do. And now it's going to actually install the components. So this is actually a pretty, pretty fast installation. And that is because obviously there isn't that much stuff that it needs to install. Um, it has gotten rid of, and you'll see once we actually boot into it, they've gotten rid of a lot of uh, the standard things that come in a standard install of XP Home Edition or Professional Edition. And that's again, just the nature of what this edition or what this unofficial edition of Windows is supposed to be. It's again, a very minimalized, um, version for kind of older computers or as the name suggests just kind of if you you know you, you would install this on a machine where you want to get just raw performance out of the OS and you're not really concerned about any of the other visual modifications and there we go it just says right here we have completed the Windows XP setup wizard 
it asks us to remove the CD that's in our drive. We're not going to bother doing that because the system should only prompt us to boot from the CD, which we're not going to, obviously. So we're just going to go ahead and let it restart here. And you'll see this is where it asks us to boot from the CD. We're just not going to press a key, and it should go ahead and boot from the hard drive. So the boot screen has remained unchanged. They haven't modified that at all because they wouldn't really need to unless they wanted to add their own logo or something like that. So there's really no, aside from that um, organization text that it had um, already put in for us, there's really like no sign at all that this is an unofficial Windows version. Uh, that is literally the only sign. So very, very interesting. They have kind of kept a very minimal footprint. And again, you could change the organization text as well if you really wanted to. And that way there would literally be, because when we get into the OS, you're going to see there's not really anything that identifies this as an a unofficial Windows version or has kind of the author's name or organization or anything like that. So you can see right here on the desktop, we have a lot of changes from the default, you know, when you first boot up into Windows XP. We have the classic theme that, that's applied. The Luna theme is not applied, although it's still in the OS, and I'm going to show you that later on. The Bliss wallpaper is not here. Uh, it, it has been changed to the, you know, just the standard solid black color, although the Bliss wallpaper is still in the OS. And just to show you, let's go ahead and right click and go into properties here. And you can see that we can go and change the theme if we want to. So we can actually change this to the standard Windows XP theme. But it's interesting that it's not applied by default for us like it normally is. Now, for the desktop settings, you can see that we have two choices for a desktop wallpaper. We have none. We can change the color if we want to. And we also have the Bliss wallpaper. So we'll just go ahead and, and apply the uh, Bliss wallpaper. Um, a screensaver, we have two options as well. We have none and we have blank. So we literally don't have um, basically any screensaver because this uh, blank screen or this blank screensaver basically just dims the screen for us. It's not actually like a moving screensaver of any kind. So uh, yeah, definitely not anything there for us. Under appearance, we can go ahead and change the uh, window and button style. We can go to the Windows XP Luna style. We have our uh, three choices in here. You can see when I press this arrow right here, we've got blue, olive green, and silver. So all that is still in here. We'll just again keep it on the Windows Classic style. And I will go ahead and actually bump this up to 1280 by 720 so you guys can see this a little bit better. So there we go. And that is everything in the display properties. Now let's go ahead and actually go to the my computer properties. So we go ahead and right click and you can see that this actually is very, very similar to XP Netbook Edition. We have a lot of shortcuts when you right click on, on uh, my computer to actually access a lot of commonly used items. So we can open up Windows Explorer, Disk Cleanup, Control Panel, Device Manager, just a lot of stuff in here that, uh, that we can do. Now the Netbook Edition unofficial Windows version actually had shut down and log off and restart commands from the right click context menu, which is something that I actually have never seen before. In here, we obviously don't have that. But that was something that Windows XP Netbook Edition did, which was very, very interesting. So let's go ahead and go into the uh, properties window right here. And you can see once again, there is really no sign that this is an unofficial install of Windows XP. The only thing that we have is the performance edition July 2009, but this was the organization text. You can very easily change this. Uh, if we go ahead and go into the start menu here, you'll see that the start menu is very, very minimalized. Um, even with the Luna theme applied, there is no user icon. Um, everything looks just a little bit smaller, a little bit scrunched down than it normally is. What's also pretty cool is when you mouse over my computer, it also kind of not only acts as a shortcut, but also as a uh, folder group, if that makes any sense. So we can actually expand this and get access to our C drive, our uh, D drive, the control panel, basically everything that is in. Actually, that's interesting though. The My Computer, you can't actually click on this. This is only like the all programs uh, group, basically. It basically expands itself, if that makes any sense. It doesn't open itself in a new window. My computer normally does that. It normally, when you click on it, it opens itself into a new window. You don't actually have that. To open a My Computer, you have to um, expand this window here. You can see when I uh, left click on it, it doesn't do anything. 
even when I right click it does the exact same thing it just brings out this program group so to actually open up the window we have to go in here and click on one of these items so for example we can go into the C drive and to get to my computer we have to click on my computer from other places here that's very very interesting uh, again Windows XP normally does not do that you can't actually click on any of these to open them up in their respective window so that's definitely a very very large change we can go into run here and uh, run Winver, and you can see that this is based off of Windows XP build 2600 service pack 3 so this is the latest and greatest uh, version of Windows XP again it's been out of support since 2014 um, but yes, uh, there you go. So this is based off of Service Pack 3. And when we go into all programs here, you can notice also that there is really not a whole lot of stuff in here. We have like six things total. I mean, it's a very, very minimalized. We have a shortcut to Windows Update. Um, under our accessories, a lot of the regular accessories are still here, even WordPad. WordPad, I believe, was cut from XP Netbook Edition. So that is still in here. This looks pretty, pretty standard. Most of the... Uh, most, if not all, of the accessories are still in here. Um, under administrative tools, we have most of these in here as well. So things like component services, computer management, all your standard stuff that you would normally see in here. One thing that you'll notice that is missing is the games folder. The games have been completely removed as well. Um, under startup, there is obviously nothing because there's nothing set to start up with the computer. And we have Internet Explorer and Outlook Express. And uh, that is literally it. I want to say this is more minimalized than uh, XP Netbook Edition. And XP Netbook Edition was pretty minimalized as it is. So this is kind of taking that even further. I mean, we literally only have six things in the all programs group. So it's, again, super, super uh, minimal, which is, of course, the whole point of this OS. Uh, now to open up the uh, control panel window, obviously there, you wouldn't really need to because you can just access all of your uh, control panel panels from the start menu here but if you want to open it up we can just uh, go into run and type in uh, control here and you can see that they've actually taken a lot of stuff out of here as well um, there is no uh, category view that has been removed um, there's not even like a large icon view you just have the list view although we may be able to change that let's go to thumbnail so you can yeah you can only actually view all these icons like any other uh, folder in Windows XP. There's no category view uh, like there normally is. But yeah, all of the regular control panel um, items are still in here. We have, you know, automatic updates. We can change our display settings. We can go into the taskbar and start menu. And uh, we can go into here and there is actually like the start menu. You can still change between the Luna start menu and the classic start menu if you want to. So we can honestly make this even more minimalized and go to the uh, classic one column uh, start menu layout. And this just looks super, super minimalized. Honestly, I think this is something that they should have done um, f you know, right out the gate. Instead of having the Luna start menu in here, uh, you know, the uh, XP2 column one, you could just go back to the one column one like it normally was in previous versions of Windows, and that would, I think, make it even more minimalized than it already is. But overall, definitely a very, very interesting unofficial Windows XP version. Again, this is Windows XP Performance Edition, a very minimalized and, uh, you know, performance-driven and focused OS. Um, this is again an unofficial Windows version, so I don't ever recommend using these on your main computer um, because we never really know who actually made these. We don't know if there are viruses or malware in this OS, although I did uh, do a scan of the ISO image with my antivirus software and it didn't find anything. Um, so that is a good sign, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's not anything in here. So if you are going to go ahead and try this out, do so at your own risk. I'm not responsible for anything that happens to your machine. And uh, as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, uh, if you found this video helpful or interesting, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And also be sure to drop me a comment down below letting me know of any thoughts, any questions or comments that you guys have, um, or any suggestions you guys have for future videos as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.